Hello world, this video brief you about the internal and external error control for the symmetric encryption. First of all, what is symmetric encryption? Consider the straightforward use of symmetric encryption. A plain text message transmitted from a source to a destination is encrypted using a secret key shared by both. If no other party knows the key, then confidentiality is provided, no other party can recover the plain text of the message. In addition, the destination is assured that the message was generated by source because he or she is the only other part that possesses the key. Furthermore, if the message is recovered, Destination knows that none of the bits of message have been altered, because an opponent that does not know the key would not know how to alter bits in the cipher text to produce the desired changes in the plain text. So we may say that symmetric encryption provides authentication as well as confidentiality. But, it may be difficult to determine automatically if incoming cipher text decrypts to intelligible plain text. If the plain text is, say, a binary object file or digitized x-rays, determination of properly formed and therefore authentic plain text may be difficult. Thus, an opponent could achieve a certain level of disruption simply by issuing messages with random content purporting to come from a legitimate user. One solution to this problem is to force the plain text to have structure that is easily recognized but that cannot be replicated without recourse to the encryption function. We could, for example, append an error detecting code, also known as a frame check sequence, or checksum, to each message before encryption. Basically, the solution is classified into two, internal error control, and external error control. For the internal error control, the source prepares a plain text message and then provides this as input to a function f that produces an frame check sequence. The frame check sequence is appended to the message, and then the entire block is encrypted using a shared secret key. At the destination, B decrypts the incoming block and treats the result as a message with an appended frame check sequence. B applies the same function f to attempt to reproduce the frame check sequence. If the calculated frame check sequence is equal to the incoming frame check sequence, then the message is considered authentic. That is how the internal error control works. Next, for the external error control, firstly, the source will prepare a plain text message and then encrypts it using a shared secret key. The encrypted block is then provided as input to a function f that produces an frame check sequence. The frame check sequence is appended to the encrypted block and then sent to the destination. At the destination, B decrypts the incoming encrypted block to get the plain text message. Meanwhile, B also applies the same function f to attempt to reproduce the frame check sequence. If the calculated frame check sequence is equal to the incoming frame check sequence, then the message is considered authentic. Thoughts how the external error control works. Note that the order in which the FCS and encryption functions are performed is critical. With internal error control authentication is provided because an opponent would have difficulty generating cipher text that when decrypted, would have valid error control bits. If instead the frame check sequence is the outer code, an opponent can construct message with valid error control codes. Although the opponent cannot know what the decrypted plain text will be, he or she can still hope to create confusion and disrupt operations. An error control code is just one example, in fact, any sort of structuring added to the transmitted message serves to strengthen the authentication capability. Thoughts all for the internal and external error control.